So uh, let me introduce you uh, a really a recent study. Basically, it has two stages. Um, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me here and to present. And this is my great honor to be uh, the last one presenter at this nice panel and sessions. So greetings to the Center for Institutional Analysis for the anniversary as well. Um, yeah, this study is uh, very recent. We um, managed to finish the first part uh, dealing with wagers. And right now we are concentrating on the second part uh, dealing with explanation of the informal payments and the uh, basically propensity for corruption or you may say um, attitudes to corruption or uh, preferences for corruption. So uh, <coughs> uh, this study um, has our, how to say, basically this is uh, uh, the study which was uh, done by a group of scholars and I'm using the data which was produced from the project uh, guided by uh, Leonid Kossels, professor from High School of Economics. But the group of people was very rather big one so the main uh, group uh, is coming from Russia so we had corporate uh, co collaborators from all mentioned uh, three other countries as well um, and we tried to do the comparative studies on um, yes transition economies uh, let, let me rephrase it like that so what was actually the motivation for me? So the study is very big and it concerns many aspects of police and uh, moonlighting behavior and um, basically a relationship between police and authorities and many other things. But my part was uh, to focus on wagers and basically my main uh, interest, uh, the interest of my group was to identify whether wages affect uh, moonlighting behavior in police or not. So uh, we know that uh, policy makers and public authorities and policy officers themselves declare, uh, basically the study was uh, started in 2010, so around that uh, year they were declaring that they have very low wages. And uh, explaining that that's why we have such a huge corruption in uh, police because we have no uh, good wagers and uh, that motivates us to actually uh, find out whether it is true or not. Um, <coughs> so the main uh, question for, uh, there are three main questions that we are seeking to answer here. This is uh, what de determines uh, wages in police. Uh, do these low wages stimulate positive attitude to corruption? And uh, what basically determines corruption approval by policemen in uh, uh, transition economies? So a lot of studies was done um, uh, on Western countries, but not so much on transition economies. And we have that uh, nice opportunity of using the comparative data set I will explain uh, more details about the data set a little bit later. So uh, the main purpose of this study was to disclose uh, wage determinants, as I have already mentioned, and identify the corruption approval uh, factors uh, for policemen in four countries. So uh, as I mentioned before, the first part of uh, uh, was focused on wagers, and here we have a lot of uh, literature dating to 1950s of how wages uh, organized, uh, dealing with labor markets, so, so wage efficiency series, human capital series, uh, um, wage differential series, and etc. And the second block of literature uh, which we are uh, using here is uh, about informal economic behavior, basically in police. And uh, there are also some papers, but this uh, part of literature a little bit thinner. Uh, there are several studies uh, of empirical part, uh, empirical studies on uh, exactly police and moonlighting behavior, but not so much again with wagers. Um, so just to um, maybe make it easier, I will also come a bit later on for that. So I will switch to the hypothesis. As I, as I told you before, I will be concentrating on two parts, so the wagers and uh, the second part will be dealing with the uh, determinants of uh, approval of uh, corruption. 
So uh, basically the wages and police are somehow related to the public sector because uh, they are especially defined by the government and all the mechanism uh, of the public sector wages. Uh, they have basic payment and they have uh, some benefits for a number of years they are working there and uh, for uh, additional payments for good work and uh, uh, surplus, uh, like uh, saying like that. Uh, and uh, we had basically several hypotheses based on the traditional theories, however we do understand that uh, uh, it's not uh, maybe uh, very right to do that because this is a public sector and especially if uh, the wages are specially formed over there but all in all the uh, police um, authorities they have some kind of uh, regulations to increase or decrease the wages among uh, the departments so we were thinking that the more educated people uh, and uh, the more tenured people will get higher wages this is obvious uh, all, uh, uh, those who are concentrating on more risk activities within the police like uh, uh, investigators for example they should also have some kind of benefits for more risk uh, uh, payment and uh, etc. So uh, the second part was dealing uh, basically which maybe I would be happy if you could comment on the, the logic behind this uh, scheme uh, because we are trying to uh, publish a paper on this part as the, pu uh, the paper on wages is already uh, uh, taken for publication. So we try to uh, explain basically the propensity for corruption measured by two things, attitude uh, to uh, law breaking and attitude to corruption itself. Um, and we are trying to explain it by three main Things. First of all, this is the gap between ideal and real wage, uh, the system of control and punishment in the police, uh, and perception of the situation and corruption in the whole police and the single department. So, um, as, as control, uh, we uh, controls we are taking the uh, socio-demographic characteristics and some others, uh, some institutional characteristics. So the districts. So basically we have three hypotheses on that. So first of all we suppose that the greater difference between ideal and real wage, so called fair wage, will uh, increase the propensity for moonlighting behavior uh, measured by proxy of uh, approving the corruption. And uh, the second one uh, is that we assume that a strong system of sanction will decrease uh, the corruption uh, at, uh, pro positive attitudes to corruption so um, and uh, the third one we suppose that the higher group approval of corruption among the policemen will also increase individual support for corruption meaning that in case I'm thinking that all in all uh, in all police they do uh, bribe and I know that my department do bribe so I will do the same so coming back to the data, uh, so the surveys, basically it was a very difficult uh, part to collect the survey. Uh, we do uh, question the policemen themselves, but before that you have no actually true information about their real sample, because it all closed, you know. So first of all we uh, went into the field and talked uh, to a lot of experts just to understand and try to have some quarters of uh, how many men, how many women are there, how many uh, of, ha of uh, different ranks, positions uh, in policemen and etc. So that to set up the quarters for the sampling. Uh, when uh, it was done, uh, we managed to uh, collect about 500 respondents per each country and all the questionnaires were the same, so uh, highly comparable, so basically they were translated to uh, <coughs> uh, local languages. We know that uh, basically one of the main concern and uh, critic could be how can you know that they tell you the truth because this is a policeman, but uh, uh, basically uh, it can be adopted to any questionnaire. 
uh, I mean this critique. Uh, so uh, the question was collected. <coughs> of course, there are no questions, direct questions about how many, how how much money you bribe or whatever. But there are some questions that can you use as a proxies. So first of all, let me say a few words about the descriptives um, <coughs> of the samples <coughs> that we have that here. So you can see that uh, there is a. Uh, in, in, for example, Kazakhstan and Russia, we have uh, younger policemen on average, uh, according to the age. So females are more spread in uh, Latvia uh, among police. Uh, so average working day more or less the same, but in Kazakhstan <coughs> they work a little bit more. So about the tertiary education, uh, you can see the very strange huge percentage in Kazakhstan. But uh, after the uh, after we received this uh, interesting phenomena, we ask the experts, they say that uh, they all have to have <coughs> high education, otherwise they are not accepted to the police. Uh, so, um, uh, about the rank position, you can see about uh, one-fourth, one-third of uh, people in the samples are having high rank position. Uh, <coughs> so, average tenure in police is very low in Russia, you can see it's exactly about average uh, tenure on, in the country. So, and the percentage of those uh, who were interviewed exactly in the capital of their countries, like Moscow and um, others. So, and here uh, also just a brief uh, descriptive statistics just to compare the uh, average wages, monthly wages and yearly wages in uh, dollars PPP. You can see that Kazakhstan is on the bottom. So basically this is, these four countries are taken from our analysis because there was a question how much money you got uh, within the last months. And these are taken from the literature. So, uh, methodology. Um, <coughs> let me maybe switch to the results directly. So basically, uh, we first uh, try, uh, we were trying to find out the uh, determinants of the wages. So as I said, as I told you already, mm, unfortunately, we cannot compare policemen with the others, for example, because there are not such, uh, there are no such survey that could you uh, allow to do that because uh, the percentage of policemen or army servant uh, in normal <coughs> census are very, very small. Um, and uh, here we have only the policemen and we can try at least to understand how the wages are set up within the police. So you can see uh, that uh, basically there is no um, extremely unexpected results. Everything is common and understandable, but uh, the only one uh, thing is uh, uh, we uh, managed to confirm the uh, basically uh, uh, the average uh, comparison of average uh, wages per month uh, by uh, regression analysis in full sample as well. So uh, in Latvia, policemen uh, controlling for all other factors earn more than in Russia, but in Kazakhstan and Bulgaria they earn less. However, uh, at first sight, if you compare the averages, uh, Bulgarian policemen would see uh, you would see that they are receiving more. So, and uh, <coughs> uh, let me switch to the main interesting second part. So, as I told you, we are taking into account the dependent variable a proxy for corruption, so attitudes towards the system uh, where the corruption is impossible or possible, so the preferences. Uh, what would you prefer uh, to, to have uh, the system where everything is strict and uh, all the rules are fulfilled and uh, etc., or you would uh, prefer the system where you can break the law? And uh, the second question about the, the declaration of uh, bribery. That's a very interesting one. So how would you treat your colleague who declared the bribery of another one? So, <coughs> and we uh, have a number of independent variables uh, according to our scheme. So the delta between fair wage and real wage, we ask, are asking a question about what would be the ideal wage of uh, 
a person on a, the same position like you in police, uh, so we can have it. And uh, the control uh, for uh, rules and uh, the opinion about the spreadness of the corruption in police. Uh, so basically descriptive statistics on dependent and main independent variables is given here, so nothing strange. Uh, you see that those who are approving the colleague who declared corruption in your department, on average between the four countries is 76 uh, percent, uh, so, but still it means that 25 percent, they disapprove such things and they are uh, free to say about that. So maximum of approving uh, the declaration about bribery is uh, in Bulgaria. So uh, the system of preferences, you see uh, that uh, about 72% prefer the strict enforcement of the laws, but still there is a percentage of those who prefer uh, law breaking. And uh, the independent variable that we are te uh, testing here, the majority of the department consider acceptable that police don't take bribe. Uh, you see the uh, averages and the maximum, uh, in maximum within Kazakhstan is 32%. Uh, they think that majority is, a, uh, I mean, uh, uh <coughs> it's acceptable to, for policemen to take bribery. And uh, uh, again, Bulgaria is the less, uh, uh, at least uh, declared corrupt, uh, how to say it, perceived by themselves uh, corrupted um, country. And uh, the results, uh, we're having uh, here two models, basically uh, the, con only the model with only controls and the model with uh, the interested uh, independent variables. Uh, there will be a second slide because uh, it was uh, too much on the one table. Uh, so, here we uh, can see that uh, basically uh, the, the interesting thing that uh, almost no controls are uh, significant. The only one thing is about the internal services, so uh, internal services and if they have any uh, other state public uh, sector experience before. So meaning that those policemen who are in the internal services or having that experience there would be approving the bribe declaration less, uh, meaning less corrupted. And this is uh, the result that we were seeking for. Uh, basically, the, the gap between uh, real and ideal wage, meaning that if it is a big gap, uh, then they would uh, be preferable, uh, express approval for corruption or, or disapprove bribe declaration. And we get exactly this. In case the gap is big, meaning that they less approve uh, bribe declaration. So, and uh, let me uh, come to conclusion. So the main uh, determinants for higher wages in police, um, as it was shown in the graph, it was uh, basically uh, tenure and uh, return in education was found only in Bulgaria for Bulgaria, uh, working hours for Latvia, uh, return to high rank in all countries, which is a uh, rather expected result. So regional differences uh, was m mainly found out in Russia, but uh, less in other countries. And department differences about the risk uh, effect of the uh, activity was found out, uh, return on that was found out only in Bulgaria and Latvia. So all in all, we can say that policemen are better paid in Latvia in comparison to Russia and less paid in Bulgaria and Kazakhstan. And uh, conclusions for uh, the corruption approval. So, <coughs> all in all, in Bulgaria and Latvia, which was expected, policemen will be uh, more likely approving bribe declaration than in Russia, uh, while in Kazakhstan less likely. And the bigger gap uh, between ideal and real wages uh, increases the chances for corruption approval. Uh, 
the more policemen think that their colleagues accept bribes, the higher the chances for corruption approval among them. So basically, uh, we found out that not only because of the explanation, you know, the power of models is not very high, we still think that there is something behind not only the wages matter, uh, the differences between uh, the wanted wage and the real wage, but also some other factors and uh, cultures and norms. And exactly so we are just on that stage of developing the more ideas uh, on uh, controlling the um, maybe some group norms or uh, some other things. So thank you very much for your attention and all the questions are very welcome. Thank you very much. We'll have five minutes. Um, do you see uh, on, on the age of uh, your uh, respondents? I, I think if you uh, are younger, you follow ide idealistic values, uh, your dreams, or, or etc. And uh, if you are older, uh, you <coughs> lost your. Uh, uh, mm, uh, you you uh, you. you um, you destroyed. Uh, you, yeah, you, you lost your um, idealistic picture from your job, and maybe uh, you know how um, the number of years of serving in the poli uh, pol 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 police. Yeah, police? That, that's exactly controlled for tenure. Ah, tenure. Right. Yeah, because we cannot include both the age and tenure in one model. Um, it doesn't matter for. Yeah. No, it was not significant. Uh, age of uh, group of age. Yeah, you cannot yeah, do that in one model. Because it's correlated with tenure. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Other questions? I have a question. Uh, the uh, well, first of all, in your wage regression, uh, I wonder whether this uh, rank position is correlated with tenure as well, because presumably yeah, it is. need to be more tenured to get higher rank. In, in such, ah, uh, you mean uh, mm -hmm. wage regression, so it could be correlated. Uh, and also, I, I well, probably I misunderstood, but uh, in your well, in other part, uh, in attitudes, your initial question was uh, nine, nine letter ranked or not. Was it binary initially, just attitude towards corruption, or it was nine, nine letter, ten letter? Yeah, basically, there were two. Dependent, there are two dependent variables. But are they initially binary? Or initially one initially binary and another yeah. one not. Why do you do, well, do you also convert it into binary? Uh, it sounds like you lose information. No, I, I don't think so that we probably... Ah, yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And, and, we and also another thing which, which is obvious, uh, we be possible to compare, well, it, it's interesting to compare people uh, of specific profession across countries, but it would be even more interesting to compare, well, the selection process into police within those countries. So, well, I don't know how to do it within your framework, but probably from other surveys you could have some ideas uh, about as compared to the average uh, national you know, values, whatever measure, the values of people working in police. Particularly, because, for example, probably in Latvia it's a uh, different self-selection process into police as compared to Russia, and even for Kazakhstan, I don't know, I have huge questions uh, who are those guys who tend to select into Kazakhstan, in Kazakhstan to work in yeah. police. Yes, so this is very important. Yeah, status of police officers. Are yes. Yeah. And, and th that's compared to, to what people expect when yeah. they uh, yeah. volunteer going into police. My understanding is, my feeling is that uh, the question, uh, the point to is uh, it's much more interesting and much more feasible to study than, for example, wages. Because what really matters is the selection process. And uh, looking at wages, it's very difficult, first of all, to understand what, uh, what wages they have. It's very difficult to compare what they have with the counterfactual. Counterfactual is not clear what kind of, what, what alternative wage they could have. 
because you don't have total sample. Yeah. Yeah. And what's the, the, the total yeah. package? Total. Uh, sorry? Total reimbursement package. Yeah, total reimbursement package, of course. Uh, then you do these regressions, of course, many questions. Then uh, you have 500 observations per country and how many you get uh, finally in the regression. So yeah, there is, it's very... There is because loss. Uh, yeah. This loss can be non-random. Mm -hmm. So you have additional biases. So basically, with this regression, you can't go too far. And it can be used as uh, an illustration, not more. So if you want to write a paper... But this is the initials uh, stage of the paper. No, 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 but uh, then yeah, yeah. it's exactly. important to understand uh, what are risks. I agree. Mm -hmm. But selection story is very important. The selection story, this is Yeah, but uh, how can you uh, pick it up? You, you wanted somehow to, I don't know, to introduce uh, values. I don't know whether you asked anything about uh, yeah. targeted to measure values. And then probably... So from and from all of them, 90% of them, they are answering beco because we want to serve to the public. I mean, the high ideals. Why did you go, why did you come to police? There is a question about that, but there is no variation in the answers, almost no variation. So it doesn't uh, show you anything. The questionnaire, but uh, well, idea that would be interesting to survey, well, to ask the same questions to well, to the public and to, to those guys. Yeah, <coughs> do agree. Because we cannot say whether they have, uh, let's say, fair wage compared to alternative for no. And if not, if you cannot say that, uh, you have very little uh, yeah, but information. My understanding was exact, exactly if they, s if they declare themselves and there is a prejudice in the society that they get less money, that's why they do the corruption. So I just wanted to understand if it is true or not, according to their exactly <coughs> declaration about their feelings, on ideal and real wages. So they declare the real wage and they declare the ideal wage, a wage for them as well, for their positions. So that was uh, the main intention, basically. But if you ask people, not in police, but mm -hmm. I don't know, in working street. in the street, uh, working in shops, in enterprises, in school, wherever, how much you get and what is the ideal wage for you? Yeah, you will get enormous... Uh, different, yeah. Yeah, an enormous gap. Yeah. And this doesn't mean that, you know, people get bribes, they are corrupted, yeah. or whatever. But not of all other policemen all are and not all corrupted. We yeah. all want to get more. Yeah. And uh, many of us believe that uh, our wages are not fair. Yeah, but uh, if, if, you, if you go to the country-specific uh, details, you would see that only in Russia it works. Uh, but in other countries, uh, it can be due to. Okay. Then, then, then also, pu public perception about this would be interesting to have, not only or within the professional inside. So, thank you very much, uh, yeah, Tatiana. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much.